hi everyone i'm tracy welcome to today's video so it's almost christmas and i'm trying to get out as much content as possible <clears throat> also thank you guys so much for participating in the giveaway that i announced in my last last video um, I just love hearing all that feedback and support. It means, you know, so much to me. So thank you guys for participating. And I'm really excited to pick someone on Christmas Day. I had this idea recently and I thought um, because there's so many, in so much interest in my um, more luxurious brushes and for good reason you know if you're considering getting one of these brushes you do want to do your research make sure it's a good fit so um, I have my five most expensive brushes right here and I'm not going to go in order of price I'm actually going to use them to apply my makeup I didn't finish um, I didn't put like um, bronzer contour blush or powder uh, finishing powder yet I'm going to try to use as many of them I can so that you guys can see how these brushes work and I'll insert b-roll where I have it okay so let's start out with this is actually the least expensive of all the brushes I'm going to talk about today and it's the first one I'm going to use and that's the Hakuhodo S5555. Now I got this right before the price increase. The main reason I got this is because I wanted uh, one vermilion handle, one face brush with this handle. I normally don't splurge and um, I wanted to mention I don't um, impulse buy for the most part I usually you know think really hard about my brush purchases especially if it's on the higher end and I want to make sure that they're not only beautiful but they're also useful like I plan to use most of the brushes I buy so this one I knew I would use it I don't use it that much anymore just because you know it's so beautiful the um, vermilion um lacquer or paint it can chip because i have the eye brush and it chipped so another reason i'm not really using this also it's a very dense brush i use it for foundation but i'm going to actually try it for cream contour today and because it's a little bit difficult to wash and it's so beautiful i usually keep this in storage but for filming i am going to bring it out today and i'm going to use it to do some cream bronzer slash contour. I'm gonna just go into this Patrick Ta Contour Duo. See, I've never used it for this, so I hope it comes out. I've only used it for foundation and it's a beautiful foundation brush. Let's just see how it works for contour. I can't imagine it not working well for this. So yeah, this is a dual fiber brush, so it does have synthetic, but it's primarily a goat hair brush. You can also get this in their regular handle too, which costs less. Oh, I'm going to tell you how much I paid for it. I paid $101 before the price increase, but when I looked it up on Food Age Japan, it's going for $105. So I do like having it, but I wouldn't say it's something you want to use uh, regularly so yeah I really like how that did that and then I'm going to use another brush to do um, this side okay so that is the Hakuhodo S5555 okay and then the next brush most of these brushes three of them are Hakuhodo and two are Chikuhodo Okay, and then the next one I'm going to talk about is the, this is the most expensive brush that I bought this year, and that is the Hakuhodo G502, and um, I had been thinking about this one for a while. I haven't had it too long, but it is an amazing brush. It, I, I mainly use it for setting powder or finishing powder, 
but it also is a nice bronzer brush, which is what I'm going to use it for today. So this brush is pretty dense. My understanding is there's a G501, which is even denser than this, but um, there's no way I would need anything denser. I do prefer um, my, my face brushes to be more airy. So yeah, this is even more dense than I would uh, prefer for a bronzer brush, but I am very, I'm definitely going to use this brush. I'm not going to put it in storage. And I haven't had this a whole, I haven't had it very long. And this is one of the goat and squirrel hair mixes that I really, really like. So yeah, it does, it doesn't um, lay down the powder very heavily. I just love this hair because it's just, it's the perfect mix. You know, it's not too soft and silky like a scroll hair brush, but it's not um, as, you know, it, it doesn't apply heavily at all. Like a, like if this was a pure goat hair brush, it would apply um, powders, I would say, pretty heavily. And then the next one I'm going to talk about is, and I have B-roll for this, is the Chikuhoto MKSK. And this is one of my favorite purchases of 2022 um, because it's the first, um, uh, what are these called? They, they, they release these Makie brushes every year, at least one. And this one, um, I, I don't know why I picked this one. I think I really liked the design here and I had heard so many good things about this particular brush. It's 100% gray squirrel. It is very luxurious. It's crafted um, very impeccably. And I really do like this one. I would say I like it more than the Z1, which, is, which I'll show in a second. And it's just, uh, I don't know, how do I say, super luxurious. I think it's more useful than a round ferrule because it can get into these areas a little better. And you can buff with it as well. I tend not to buff with it, but um, it's, it's a beautiful brush. And again, one of my favorite purchases of the year. And it is still available on Fude Japan and CD Japan. I paid 20,000 yen at the time. It cost 151. And um, I, I didn't look up the current price, but I think it might be even less. I think it might be in the $140 range. And for what you're getting, that is actually a pretty good price. It's very, very high quality. The handle is very beautiful. And I do think it is very useful. It's got a slight pinch. So um, yeah, I don't know, I just love it. I, I think I'll, I will put this in storage just because I wanna you know keep it as pristine as possible. But um, this is one of my, my favorite purchases and I'm so glad I went ahead and, and got one of these special, um, you know, limited Chikuhoto brushes. I don't know if I'll get another one, maybe, you know, later down the line, but um, I definitely don't use this type of brush a lot, but I do like having one. I'm glad I have one, because I've been hearing so many good things about it. Now we're gonna talk about the Chikuhoto Z1. I got this right before the price increase, and I ended up paying it was 17,000 yen at that time, which was $143. Um, I th oh yeah, and currently it goes for, I believe it is like 19,000 yen, but um, with the exchange rate, it's probably, it probably costs less now than when I bought this. I bought this back in February. And um, I do love having it. I just don't really use it. It's a perfectly uh, round ferrule. 
And so for me, it makes it a little bit harder to get into certain areas. But what I do like is I like this for the final blend. So, um, you know, I'm going to have to put some blush on first. You know, I'm going to use this Kiss of Rose from Bare Minerals. I got I just got this and this has got some shimmer. So I like using a brush like this for a blush that has shimmer because I feel like it really brings out that sheen. I don't know if I've ever used this for blush, so I really hope this comes out. And a brush like this, you can buff and it won't disturb your makeup because the hairs are so soft. Oh, you know what? I didn't powder first. Oh, I hope it doesn't come out blotchy. I didn't powder my skin today. Yeah, well, that looks okay. I mean, I wouldn't use this for blush. It's just a little big. So let me use a proper blush brush first, the G5545. And then I'll use the other, the Z1 to buff it out. I really like these Bare Minerals bronzers. This is the second one I got and I like the Kiss of Copper better. This one is called Kiss of Rose. But it's, it's very beautiful and it does have that bronze undertone so you can kind of put it more generously if you want to add some warmth to your skin. But this is more of a, it's definitely more blush than bronzer. Okay, so you see how this side, I use this and it has that sheen. Whereas this side, less so. I'm not sure if it's translating. But let me try to bring out the sheen with this brush. just feel like it smooths out your skin after you put your powder products down. It is an extra step that I usually don't do. But if you feel like your skin is looking a little matte or a little dry, this will kind of kind of bring your skin to life without making it shimmery. Okay, so I hope you can see what this did. It's very subtle, but that's what I've come to use this for. And to be honest, I really haven't used it much at all. And I thought I would use it more. I just prefer the other larger brushes I have because of the shape. But um, if you do like these larger fluffy squirrel hair brushes, it is a fabulous brush. Okay, so now we're down to the last one. And this one is is pretty new. I got it in my last Hakuhoda order. I have not even washed it, but I'm really liking it for finishing powder. And let's see, I am going to use this Dior Powder No Powder. This is another product that I use it like a finishing powder because it's not actually powder. I feel like if you use a brush like this, like a denser brush, that really buffs the product in. It gives your skin a very smooth appearance and it blends your other makeup products in. So, and um, it was Nikki who, um, I'll put her Instagram handle um, down below, who recommended a brush like this for this powder. She recommended the Sonia G Master Face, which is a good option. But what I like about this is that it's small, so you can get into little areas a little better. And I like using this with um, the Hourglass powders too. But just for, just for today, I'm gonna use the Dior Powder No Powder in number two. And I like getting like this area, because this is where I put a lot of my powder products down. And I just use a light buffing motion. I don't press too hard. 
I really wish I maybe laid a little bit more powder down. It's been pretty cold here where I am and my skin gets really dry when it gets cold. So I've been trying to avoid powdering my face because it just makes my skin feel more dry. And I haven't used this for anything else. So after I wash it, I'll try it out with like blush and bronzer, but it's a little small for bronzer. I've been loving it for finishing powder. It doesn't mess up what you got. And I really hope this is translating, but these type of things, it's hard to show on camera. Let me try to see if I could. So, and this one, I'll share the price with you guys. Um, the Hakuhoto G6440, I paid $119. And I believe it's still about that price. So, it's a perfectly round ferrule, um, the, another goat and squirrel hair mix. And yeah, it's pretty small. Um, I don't know if I have something this size I can't think of anything on the top of my head but it's it's on the smaller side and you know it's domed it's not flat but it's not super rounded it's yeah it's a really nice brush okay so I'm going to recap the brushes um and tell you guys which ones I think are worth it if you're considering getting a brush like this so with the S5555 I would only get this if you want a vermilion handle. It's um, the performance is not like out of this world. It is very nice. It does foundation beautifully, but it's not a type of brush that you can't get somewhere else. Like Refer has one, and I'm sure um, other brands have brushes that perform like this. But if you're looking for a vermilion handle, you know, it is a beautiful brush. All the vermilion brushes are. Oh, I'll talk about the Hakuhoro G502. I think this is a fabulous brush. I am really glad I got it. Very plush, very luxurious. I think um, very multifunctional. You could set, um, set your face. You can use it for bronzer and finishing powder. I would say um, it probably does all of those things equally as well. If you're someone that has oily skin and you're trying to set um, more heavily, I think this is also a good brush for that. Also, if you have oily skin, um, a pure goat hair, um, a pure squirrel hair brush might not be your best bet because these absorb oil very easily. So this might be a better option. Is it worth it? Maybe not. You know, if you're looking to really splurge, I would go for the Chikuhoto MKSK. Um, Price-wise, you're looking about the same um, price range, but with this one, you're getting the beautiful Makie design. You're also getting really high quality, pure, go um, pure squirrel hairs, which is more expensive, but um, I would say, of the five that I talked about, I would say this is my um, my favorite. I would say not the most used, but it's the combination of performance, craftsmanship, and aesthetic. It has all those things. And um, if you are gonna splurge on any one of these five, I would say this one would be my choice. And um, for the Z1, I, I, you know what, I'm not going to recommend this one, but it is a nice brush. This one is crafted very beautifully. It's not super dense, but it is pretty dense. I think the reason I don't use it is because the round ferrule for me is a little bit harder to use. I think a, a pinch ferrule is easier and it gets more, it gets 
more things done. But, um, you know, if you do like this really plush uh, squirrel hair brush with a round ferrule, you probably will love this brush. It's just not my favorite of the ones that I'm talking about. Okay, and then the last one, the G6440. And um, it's hard to say because I haven't had this too long. Um, it is a little expensive considering... It's not a large brush, but it is a beautifully crafted brush. I don't want to say too much about it because I haven't even washed it and I've only had it maybe two months. So far, I'm really, really liking it for setting, uh, for finishing powder. But um, do you need this brush to get the results? No, you can use a different brush. You can use the Sonia G Master Face. You can use you know, even the Amuragishi Sangyo um, cheek brush probably has gives similar results because this is the same mix. It's just that it's dyed. So um, I do like having this, but I wouldn't say, you know, if you're looking to splurge on a really nice brush, I wouldn't say this is the one. So that is the 6440. And yeah, I think that's going to do it. Um, I think of all the five here that I bought, and these are all these are all splurges. I don't buy brushes because of what they look like solely. Uh, I do like buying brushes that are beautiful, but I wouldn't buy a beautiful brush just because of the way it looks. Like I have to be excited for the performance, and I have to feel comfortable using it for my makeup. So that's how I am. I'm not going to buy like a $400 Takeda brush that is so expensive that I don't even want to wash it, you know, or something like that. It's probably not going to happen with me. Um, it has to be in the price range where I'm comfortable using it, washing it, and, you know, just getting use out of it. So, so far what I think these are the, these two are the best performing brushes, the MKSK and the G502. Yeah, I think these are the most expensive, if not well, the, the, these two on the Z1. But if I if I had to start all over and I could only get two of these, I would say I would get these two. Also, this one is limited edition. I'm surprised it's still available. So, um yeah, this one is probably not going to be available too much longer. Then again, I thought that when I bought this brush, but um, yeah, this one, I don't know. I love both of these. These are both amazing. And um, if you are gonna get one of these, I would say one of these two. Okay, I hope that wasn't too <laughs> confusing. Uh, and I hope there, I, I hope this information is helpful. And yeah, I I'm going to be, in town for Christmas and uh, we have visitors here so we don't go anywhere for Christmas but um, yeah that's all I have for today thank you guys so much for watching and thank you all that have recently subscribed um, I think I've had some of my biggest um, growth days recently and I I'm so thankful and it's just making my holiday season even better. So thank you guys so much and I will see you all next time. Bye.